Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Rightway Options, and this is the Morning Market Prep video for Friday, September 6th, 2024. Well, yesterday was quite a volatile day, whipsawing upside, up and down uh, most of the day. And this morning, we are facing some economic data that could be very interesting. We'll talk about that in just a minute. How about we take a look at what happened overnight? First off, um, Asian markets were mostly lower last night. Um, Japan missed on some spending expectations and Hong Kong was closed due to um, what was called a super typhoon. Uh, they closed the, that down. But other than that, we had Australia that was up just slightly 0.39% while uh, pretty much everything else was lower and moving to the downside. Um, if we take a look at European markets this morning, European markets are bearish across the board but not in a um, not in a real aggressive way. The DAX down 0.45%, FTSE down 0.34%, and the CAC down 0.20%. If we look at U.S. futures, well, U.S. futures are also looking lower, and boy, the NASDAQ is looking at a pretty good hit this morning. If... Um, we were to take a look at the QQQ um, a gap down this morning right now, 1.17% or $222.50 on current futures read um, gapping lower here this morning. Now, that could change with the data, but we've got S&P 500 lower by 0.66%, and the Dow futures are down 143 points or uh, 0.35% here this morning. Now remember, this is very, very early and a lot is going to potentially change this morning as we move along. Let's take a look at oil prices here this morning. Boy, oil um, has had some pretty tough times here, but the data yesterday showed a major decline in supplies and um, we see oil prices starting to find a little bit of footing here this morning with um, oil up 12 cents at 69.27 a barrel brent being up 14 cents at 72.81 a barrel so uh, we'll have to keep an eye on that uh, natural gas this morning natural gas this morning is continuing to move on higher maybe stabilizing in this w or double bottom formation here in oil. Taking a look at cryptos this morning, boy, cryptos have had a pretty tough time here lately, um, staying um, staying bullish. This morning, we have a little bit of rebound after yesterday's pretty disappointing pullback here in uh, that market. Bitcoin this morning um, up $60 um, a coin. Uh, running in there around 56,000 on the index. Um, Ether uh, being up 3.98 uh, points and 0.170%. Uh, so trying to come back up in most, most of those cryptos are showing a little bit of bullishness this morning. Now, one of the reasons that might be the case is we have bonds this morning moving um, slightly lower. They started to run up yesterday heading into the close, but um, the two-year bond right at this moment is at 3.71%, the 10-year at 3.70%, and the 30-year bond at 3.99%. So they are moving lower here with fairly strong confidence of a rate cut. That might, we might expect to see some pretty substantial moves in this um, um, on the data here today, but we'll talk about that again in a second. And then if we look at our uh, precious metals, um, taking a look at uh, gold, gold's a little bit higher this morning right now. Gold is up $5.40 announce in the futures we're also seeing um, silver 
um, just a little bit higher here today. Copper, platinum um, are up, but palladium just a little bit lower this morning. So what does all that mean for today? Well, how about we settle in? Let's buckle up. Let's get ready for the Friday edition of the Morning Marker Prep video. Good morning once again, everyone, and thank you so much for being here. I very much appreciate it. How about we take a look at these charts, see if we can figure out how we might want to approach the market for today. Remember, we want to look at these charts for what they are, not for what we want them to be. Be focused in on the price action and set our bias aside for the moment. So let's take a look here. Um, if the uh, bears were to continue excuse me, continue to find inspiration here today, you'll notice we've got this support level in here in the chart and we're gapping back down to that here in the pre-market um, open. Now that data today is going to change this likely to the positive, to the negative. I don't know, but if we look on lower, you can see the next area of price support might be down in here. down in here and then we have that gap below that could be filled right in here so we could move down here pretty sharply if the bears were to really engage in the market if the bulls however were to find inspiration today well bouncing up off of here would be pretty logical situation bouncing up we'll see if we can break out of this little downtrending move that we've made in here push up to retest this resistance in the chart and of course if we can break out of there then we're going to start pushing on up to see if we can test these levels again and then of course back up to all-time highs in the chart so watch carefully for that remembering here that our 50-day moving average is still below and if those bears um, were to engage notice it really wouldn't be all that difficult to envision a test of that 50-day moving average so keep, kind of keep an eye on that if those bears have their way if we look at the spy spy pulling back and you can see this morning looking for a pretty nasty little gap down um, in the chart and as i had suggested that if we were to fall into this gap Watch for that possibility that we could fill that gap uh, pretty quickly. And it looks like we might be getting that done in the overnight session. So pushing back to potentially fill that gap here in the chart. And if the bears continue to push, well, we've got this price support in here, as you can see right across that area. If we were to push down below there, I'm going to suggest the market is going to come into some major fear. Um, if we push down below there. So watch carefully if that were to occur. Um, support levels in here, you can see there's another little gap below that could be filled if those bears were to really get going. Now, if the bulls find um, inspiration, very logical place for us to fill this gap and bounce up off of this area. And we would start pushing back up to see if we can deal with some of these areas of resistance. Those double wicks up there might uh, provide a little bit of resistance as we move on up. Breaking back through this area, of course, we can start coming up. And I think there's a little area right there in the middle that could provide a little resistance before we push right up, up into that consolidation. And then, of course, the challenge past that is breaking through this consolidation in the chart. We also want to remember that um, we ended up closing the day. We failed at one point in time, failed that 50-day moving average. We ended up pushing back up to close right there on that 50 day and as you can see we have that real serious risk this morning that we're going to gap below that so a possible failure could be on the way in the spy the qqq well my goodness the qqq struggled a lot we bounced around quite a bit in here 
on that chart and I've been talking about that possibility if we push on lower well we've got another gap here that could be filled and it looks like we're headed there at least in the pre-market for that chance to fill that gap if the bears continue to push I'm going to suggest this support down here might be the next level to be watching and then once we get past that if we start coming into this you can see that's a big level of support if we were to get past that and start moving down even further well we've got maybe some support right there a little bit of support right there in the middle of this range that i've got but then we'd likely be testing the underneath side of this consolidation area here in the queues now if the buyers find inspiration first thing we need to do is break back above this little area here and then we'll start progressing back up to see if we can start dealing with these resistance levels and coming back up into this range now remember if those buyers do get going we're going to want to be watching that 50-day moving average as a potential resistance area because one of the um, um, most common patterns in the market for a short is that rally back toward that 50-day and then we turn on over and remembering overall this lower high in here is important so we do potentially have that beginning of a downtrend here in the qqq so watch that carefully if we look at our russell iwm also had um kind of a rough day yesterday um seesawing back and forth but ended up finishing just a little bit lower and you can see gapping down this morning we may well come on down and test this area of price support and this um, older trend in here to see if we can hold that area right there so we got a little double whammy of trend support in there to catch us if the bears were to push below there i would suggest that we're going to be experiencing some pretty severe fear in the market and we could start moving on lower in that area pretty rapidly so watch carefully if that were to be the case however if the bulls find inspiration this is a very logical place where we would find that price support catch that bounce and start moving back up to retest some of these resistance levels in the chart pushing on through um, in this level now you do want to keep in mind um, yesterday we ended up holding right onto that 50-day moving average and this morning we are gapping below it so we do have that potential of that failure in that um, IWM this morning failure of the 50 let's take a look at our VIX real quick our VIX I mentioned this to the folks in RWO at the close yesterday. I do a wrap up at the end of every day and we kind of go through this, uh, taking a look at what could be uh, for uh, the next day. And as you can see, we've got um, this support level in here in the chart and we have not been able, at least at the moment, to break this back down. There's just enough uncertainty in the market. Now, what I've said many times before is it's always the higher low. When you make the higher low in this index and fear follows through to the upside, that's when the real selling starts. So we've been trying to relieve all of this selling and, and trying to hold the confidence that everything's good, everything's okay. Um, but notice that we have that potential. If those bears were to engage, that could create that higher low. And we might see um, some pretty rough selling coming into play. You'll notice we've got a little bit of resistance maybe right in there but then we could push right on higher here in the chart next test up here i think is going to be right up here see if we can push on through there then maybe up in here and then well sky's the limit after that i think if um we find the bulls find inspiration well there's every reason to believe that if the bulls get the data that they're looking for here that we would break this area pretty quickly um, in the pre-market and start pushing us down and then we'd start looking for these areas of price support in here to look for that hold in here and i would say that would be a very bullish circumstance for the market if we start pulling that back
if we take a look at our uh, T2122, T2122, the four week new high, new low ratio, and you can see as I continue to mention and warn and warn and warn that we can linger up here, but we will never go beyond that point and we will eventually catch a pullback. Well, we've got it. Um, no, I mean, no, um, no prediction here required, just following the market um, um, moves. And as you can see, this pushback here today gives us a big upside opportunity if that data today um, inspires the bulls. However, if it inspires the bears, we do want to notice just how, how overbought we were in that short period of time, how much we've pulled back and we still have a big downside opportunity still before we reach an oversold condition um, here in T2122. So kind of keep in mind, we could easily go either way. Sentiment might be a little bit on the bearish side here at the moment because we did slip below that 50% area here in T2122. If we take a look at our T2108, percentage of stocks above the 40 day moving average. Well, we did drop below that 50% area here in the chart and that does raise a little bit of concern. But I want you to notice that we have support underneath this price area here. So all is not lost. If the bulls can find that inspiration here today, I would look for this to move back up and maybe even move up sharply if that number, those numbers um, support uh, what the bulls want to see. So watch that carefully. However, if those bears were to continue to push on down, this would probably start to raise some fear in the market and really um, um, start to put some pressure on um, traders um, considering the, the, the potential situation of recession. If we take a look at uh, T2107, T2107 also pulling back, but well above its 50% area. This is a percentage of stocks above the 200 day moving average. Notice we have really good support levels underneath here. So if the bulls find that inspiration, a pop up here um, certainly looks logical. Breaking back down below some of these areas of price support, I think would create, again, some major worry in the market. One of the things that's been kind of interesting to me is although we're sliding toward the corporate buyback blackout period, um, a lot of companies still have a little bit of time to yeah. be doing corporate buybacks. And we saw yesterday QQQ, the big tech giants were the biggest movers in the day. They ended up fading by the end of the day, but I think those corporate buybacks were coming in. What's interesting though, is that even as we sold off in the market back off, we didn't see any increase in breadth. Now, that should, you know, you can hold your breath and cross your fingers and hope that what that means is that today's data will move us back up and we'll get that relief rally in the market. Um, but one of the things we also want to note is so far on any bullish wave, we haven't seen a big breadth improvement. So a little bit of concern here in, um, in those numbers. Um, and you can just see the weight that's been put on um, the, um, the jobs number today. There's a lot of interest in that and a lot of weight being put on that. So I would expect some volatility this morning as that number comes out. So let's take a look at that um, number here this morning. What we've got is the employment situation number. And there's some interesting comments coming out. There's some people really beginning to say these numbers are so bad that they're, they're virtually useless. And the suggestion is that this number could come in hot today because of seasonal adjustments. Now that's not what other numbers are saying about the economy, but these numbers, if uh, our Fed is making decisions uh, based on these numbers and it would almost um, um, make us think that we're faking way too many things here in the market to get good policy decisions. 
hope I'm wrong on that, but boy, there is a lot of conversation about that right now. If we take a look right here, you can see our non-form payrolls. They are expecting this to push up to 160,000. Like I said, there uh, um, are folks suggesting this could go a lot harder, be really hot um, with the seasonal adjustments. So keep an eye on that. We could see um, if that number comes in very hot, the market's going to be disappointed, I think, because that removes that opportunity for the big rate cuts um, in the market if it comes in hot. And then they're According to all the rumor out there, the number could come in hot and then they'll be revised down sometime later. Um, we'll see. But watch that closely. And then, of course, um, they're looking for unemployment to tick lower down to 4.2. We've got uh, private payrolls uh, at 136. That's up from the 97 manufacturing payrolls showing a negative 2000 uh, participation rate stays the same hours um, average hourly work um, moving up by point uh, to point three from point two on earnings um, average hourly earnings year over year moving up to point seven from point six and participation rate staying the same so or average hour um, hourly work week. I've, Sorry, not participation rate. So keep an eye on these numbers today. There's an awful lot of focus on this this morning. And of course, this could have impacts on the Fed rate decisions. Now, after that, we're going to get um, William speaking and Waller speaking. And then, of course, a Baker Hughes rig count. So expect some volatility. Expect the market could change dramatically um, as that number comes out this morning before we ever get a chance to make a trade on it. But watch that carefully. Let's take a look at our earnings calendar here for today. And our earnings calendar is pretty darn light. There's not a whole lot going on here on the earnings calendar. Um, but... A few notables. Um, we're going to hear from ABM this morning. Keep an eye on that. Looks like that's moving on higher on its report this morning. We've got BRC. That's also moving up. DOOO moving sharply lower. And um, GCO. GCO will also be reporting. Um, not CGO. GCO. There we go will be reporting this morning. So keep an eye on those. Let's take a look at um, a few things, stocks that could be setting up for today. But before we do that, everyone, if this is the first time you've seen these videos, if you could please click that subscribe button on YouTube and also click that bell icon when it pops up so you'll be notified every time I post a video. And if you find these videos to be useful or helpful, if you could do me that favor, click that thumbs up button, leave a brief comment. That helps the channel to continue to grow. Thank you so much, everyone. I do truly appreciate it. You guys are very awesome. Never never would have guessed something that doesn't have a whole bunch of hype or, predict, hype or prediction in it would get um, the attention it does and um, means the world to me. So thank you so much. Now let's take a look at some of these stocks setting up. Remember, these are not recommendations to buy or sell any security. Do your own due diligence, follow your trading rules and your guidelines. Never blindly follow anyone else's trade ideas. So first off, let's take a look. Um, I put another alert on and uh, there's that pattern again here in Ross stores. Breaking through this resistance um, on that big gap up earnings report here and then resting, resting back in here. And I'm watching for that opportunity for this to pop. You can see yesterday it did pop up there a little bit. I didn't take the trade, but I'm watching this carefully uh, just because of the data today. I didn't want to be buying up a whole bunch of positions um, with that data uh, pending. So watch that carefully here. This may have that opportunity to hook right on around and start heading back up. Keep an eye on that. Um, there are quite a few charts out there still looking very, very good in the defensive sector area. Take a look at Altria. My goodness, what a run this made. And now 
finally resting just a little bit. Now, as it rests, you'll notice where we broke through a little resistance here in the chart. And you also want to notice that, well, we haven't made all time highs here yet. So there is that possibility if this were to rest, consolidate or pull back a little bit, we may have that opportunity for that next move to the upside to attack those all time highs. We should be keeping an eye on stocks like Coke that finally got a little bit of rest or pullback here in the market. Resting back into trend, look for that next opportunity for those to the upside. But there's also stocks that just don't really want to give up very much. Take a look at Mondelez. Now this morning it's suggesting it might gap a little bit lower here, but this is in a, an amazing upside run and you can see trying to test some resistance areas up here in the chart and possibly even a breakout. When we take a look at utilities, my goodness, there's a lot of good looking utilities out there. Um, utilities been running to the upside, resting the last couple of days. But take a look at this. We start looking into some of these stocks. Consolidated Edison, there's a lot of good bullish looking charts in here. Now, some of them might need a little bit of rest before um, they pick up that next buy signal, but there is a lot going on in that area of good looking stocks. And if you take a look at the consumer staple area, um, um, XLP, um, look at the run that's happened in this consumer staple area. There was my original alert on that. Look at the run that's been made in here. And as you can see, if we were to move or look at some of these stocks, there are a lot of old, boring, defensive sector stocks in here looking good. Take a look at Campbell's Soup, uh, Colgate, Constellation Brands breaking the downtrend, pushing back up a little W bottom formation, holding General Mills. Look at the, I mean, cereal. Uh, I mean, you don't get much more boring than something like General Mills, but look at that thing run here to the upside, stretching out toward all time highs here, or not all time highs, but recent highs. All time highs go way higher here on General Mills. So this may be an opportunity um, on a little rest or pullback to pick that up. Um, um, there's just so many bullish charts in here. A um, lot going on. Tyson has been um, a nice winner. Hormel um, has been uh, moving back up. Take a look at Post, another cereal company. My goodness, look at that thing. Really beautiful run to the upside. Pulled back a little bit yesterday, but this this is, um, here I'm going to show you weekly, this is an all-time high and post continuing to run to the upside um, again defensive sector stocks looking good and safety plays now that being said we got to take a look at gold in here gold continues um, to be a little bit volatile pushing up now this could have major changes in price today based on how the bonds react um, to this jobs data today uh, if the number comes in hot and there is somebody out there, um, you can go look it up on Zero Hedge, somebody out there that bet huge that this number is going to come in really hot and that we're going to see bond yields zoom back up, that would push gold back. That's, you know, if bond yields zoom up, the dollar goes up in value, that would push gold back. So expect some volatility in some of these today. But I want you to notice if that is not true, if we don't get that and this number comes in weak, I would expect gold to make some new all time highs here. So keep an eye on gold, keep an eye on PHYS, physical gold ETF. Um, take a look at uh, those silver um, stocks in here. Um, big gap up here the other day, resting along this support. We'll see if that can hold. This could see some substantial moves as well. Um, so if you're thinking about protection, gold, silver, precious metals, or another place that you want to be taking a look. So with that, everyone, just a real word of caution. I think anything is possible this, this morning. An awful lot of weight is being placed on this. Don't be too surprised if we see some big volatility prior to the market opens on how the market reacts to those numbers. So 
I wish you all the best. I want everyone to have a wonderful day, a great weekend. I'll see you right back here bright and early Monday morning next week. Take care, everyone. And as always, I wish you all the very, very best.